All right, guys, I've been doing the the world of EDC. I've been in the community, been doing the EDC for about 10 years now. And today I thought it'd be interesting to kind of go over like, what is my setup 10 years into EDC? What is change or what changes on the regular? What really doesn't change that much? And then actually look at my setup. So without any further ado, guys, let's jump right into my EDC 10 years later. All right, so like I said, before we exactly dig into what is my EDC or, you know, like what I'm carrying, 10 years of experience and just being an absolute pro boss at this, you know, um, knowing everything in the EDC community, just like I do, um, certainly one interesting thing about EDC for sure in the last 10 years has been the absolute explosion of not just people joining the community and wanting to be a part of EDC, wanting to learn, you know, like how to make the best, you know, everyday carry for their lives, but also to an absolute explosion of manufacturers. And I mean this both foreign and domestic, um, you know, in knives, in gear. I mean, we see things such as, let's just say these wallets, for instance, by Open Seas Leather, you know, they started about 10 years ago, technically eight to be exact, but you know, like we've seen this massive explosion, you know, um, before people like Open Sea, you know, there might've been Travax wallets, there might've been a handful of, you know, people making kind of, you know, just go-to stuff for everyday carry, but we've seen an absolute explosion of manufacturers and gear come on to the market. And I think that that has really played a lot into people's <clears throat> mindset and how they go about everyday carry because to be honest there's so many different types and lifestyles uh, so EDC is definitely not a one-size-fits-all but this is kind of my perception of it and I do hold on to a lot of the kind of classic mindsets of everyday carry because to be honest this is a lot of the stuff that I've been rocking for a long period of time and this just kind of is my go-to. So first off let's talk about what changes frequently in my EDC. Now of course you don't have to necessarily be around this channel for a long period of time to understand that I have a lot of knives. I have for EDC knives alone over 55 knives or like folding pocket knives like these guys over 55 knives so I definitely change up and have a pretty good rotation on my everyday carry pocket folding knives these are my go-to's you know these are like my blades that I typically just run for opening packages you know just doing the daily life tasks sometimes you know cutting up pizza something like that you know these are the knives that I use for those tasks now another one that kind of changes semi infrequently is defensive knives now these are a little bit different style knives as you can tell here this is an Emerson Elvia and you know this is a essentially a pocket folding pacal and so these are a little bit different but I have a handful of defensive knives things like the Spyderco Matriarch 2 of course the Elvia and other knives that are a little bit more tactical or defensive these are knives that you're not really going to be opening packages with but if you need to carry them especially in place of something like a firearm because there are places where you can't have a firearm but there are you know places where you can have a knife and so you know leaning towards a defensive knife in those types of situations is usually what i will do um, so other things, speak of the devil, other things that do change, I would say fairly frequently and that I have another rotation of is in fact firearms. So firearms are one that once again, similar to knives, I don't have as large a collection of firearms as I do uh, knives, but I do have a collection of firearms as well as a collection of knives. So another thing that is a rotation item for me is going to be firearms. This one in particular is a Springfield Prodigy and I really do dig this gun despite the criticism and hate that a lot of people have for this one i still do run the springfield prodigy and enjoy it um, so those are things that do um, kind of rotate fairly frequently now let's talk about some things that really don't um, rotate for me and i think the first one for me has to be the probably the oldest piece of edc item that i regularly edc and this one is a 2012 vintage hopefully you guys can see that there um, but zippo lighters i almost always edc a zippo lighter i have a handful of them so i do have a small rotation but realistically speaking i pretty much just set and forget one and it's usually the satin one and the reason why i choose this one is i 
have a few coated ones, like I have a black coated one, but I usually throw this in a pocket with other things such as pens, flashlights. And I know that if I throw a black coated one in there, it's gonna get scratched, dinged, chipped, and damaged. So this one does indeed have some battle wounds on it. Hopefully you guys can see, but because this is like a satin, you know, finished um, lighter, it already has kind of a rough and tumble finish. So it doesn't really, you know, like have any issues in that regard. So the lighters are something that I never, almost never really replace. Other things that I fairly infrequently replace are gonna be things like wallets and pens, just because once again, I do really enjoy having a nice high quality pen. This is a smooth precision pen um, for writing titanium, you know, kind of bolt action. And then of course I have an open seas leather um, quick draw top sider. So these are things that I honestly do use quite frequently, pens and you know my wallet and stuff like that I use nearly on a daily basis. However, for me, um, you know, they're just things that I, I like them. I like to just get one really high quality piece of kit and just kind of keep it around. To be fair, once again, I do have a small rotation of pens. I do have a small rotation of wallets because once you've been in this game for, you know, like 10 plus years, you know, you just kind of collect, you know, you do want maybe, you know, a few wallets. You do want maybe, you know, a few different pens. But for the most part, um, honestly, like I have probably about five wallets, but usually this top side or quick draw is kind of just my go-to. It's kind of my set and forget. Another one I don't rotate a whole lot is the flashlights. Now flashlights are kind of an exception because as new technology progresses, flashlights do get brighter and brighter and also in smaller packages. But this is a Phoenix LD30 and I've had this one for quite a few years now and honestly like Technology for flashlights takes you know, a few years to advance. And so this is just really my flashlight, my go-to flashlight, because for, what, for its size, it has a 1600 lumen output. I really just cannot complain about that. So my flashlights don't tend to rotate too frequently. Next one up, and the last one that I don't tend to change too, too often is going to be my multi-tools. So my multi-tool is recently, I've updated it to the Leatherman Arc, and this one's still kind of in trial, you know, I'm playing around with it as I think most of us are. Um, but the Leatherman Arc does show some promise for a good EDC multi-tool, but for the most part, for the past, you know, three years, I've been running the G10, Black G10 um, Charge Plus from Leatherman, and honestly, I didn't really have any motive motivation outside of, you know, something newer and something potentially better coming along and uh, replacing it, honestly. And about the only reason I really upgraded to the Leatherman Arc was because it had been three plus years with the Charge Plus. And I still absolutely love that tool, by the way, in case anyone's wondering. Um, it's not only just a collectible, but it's just a fantastic multi-tool. So I'm really like not that motivated to get rid of it or to change my multi-tools too, too frequently. I would say last thing is tech. You know, my phone does and my phone and my watch do, you know, on a reasonable basis get updated. Once again, I kind of follow a similar philosophy as flashlights with my technology. And that is that honestly, you know, like every, you know, three, four years as technology does improve and get better, I will upgrade them. But also too, with things like watches, things like, or smart watches and, you know, phones, they do degrade over time, right? They do, they are a usable item. And while they have a good amount of life to them, you know, batteries degrade, functionality degrades. And so if you are wanting to, you know, stay on top of that or stay, you know, with the curve, you do have to continue to update them. You know, at least at every, three to four years. So that's kind of my philosophy when it comes to things like technology as a whole. Not necessarily looking for the most advanced, but do need something that is a little bit with the times, especially being a content creator, I think um, kind of makes that a pressing issue because you do have to stay with or reasonably up to date to stay, you know, not necessarily competitive, but at least, you know, sustainable in the market. So anyways, guys, that is a look at, you know, kind of the things that change and don't change. Now let's just go briefly over my EDC loadout for now. Like I said, it does kind of change with things like the knives, but yeah, let's jump into it. So first off for the knife, we have the Benchmade bug out. This is the blade HQ edition in JG 10 CPM 20 CV blade. And that is one that I honestly don't pull out too often. I'm not a huge bug out fan to be, to be quite frank, but I do have it. I do occasionally pull it out. Defensive knife is, as I mentioned earlier, the Emerson Elvia this time. I do have other options, but the Elvia is just very cool. And it's a semi-recent um, acquisition for me. So still 
kind of that new car, new knife smell to it, if you will. So anyways, then of course we have the Smooth Precision Pens bolt action and um, Phoenix LD30 for flashlight. Of course, just a classic Zippo in satin, nothing too special there. Then of course we have the Open Seas leather top sider with the quick draw feature. So got some cards in the back there. Then of course, as I mentioned earlier, we have the Leatherman Arc. So that is the multi-tool, go-to multi-tool. Then of course, rounding it out, we have the firearm. This is the Springfield Prodigy. I'm rocking the 17 round magazine. I believe I'm rocking, yeah, some plus P plus um, hollow points in here. They're 124 grainers. Um, they're underwood ammunition plus P plus. They are pretty spicy, but also too, this is a very, very thick bowl barrel as you guys can kind of see there. So this is a very thick chamber, very thick barrel on this thing. So it of course can take some high pressure loads. And it's also worth mentioning, I have a um, hollow sun 407K X2 as the optic up here. Primarily chose this one because I wanted a flush or reasonably flush sitting um, red dot up there. A lot of the red dots and even the one that I was previously running on it, um, they just kind of sit um, wide of the slide and wide of the frame. So I really like the 407 because it's smaller and has a smaller view portal as you guys can see there, but it does ultimately sit pretty much, pretty much flush with the actual um, slide of the gun. So it's a very compact package and still gives you a really good target presentation. So I definitely enjoy it. Then of course I have the 20 round spare magazine there and I believe I'm running Extreme Penetrators. Yeah, the 115 grain Extreme Penetrators from Underwood Ammo. Hopefully this focuses. So that's running there. And then of course this is in a um, tier one concealed custom Kydex sheath. So that is the uh, sheath for it. And uh, yeah, that's basically the bulk of the setup. Of course, the Apple, uh, the Apple Watch Ultra, of course, on my wrist, and of course, an Apple um, iPhone 12 Pro Max for the phone. So that's basically it. Of course, you know, there's things like water bottles and little little changes that here and there, but that's really the setup as a whole. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you enjoyed taking a look at this and kind of just going over EDC stuff. Um, I don't do it super frequently anymore. So I'm getting more back into survival knives, but it's worth talking about, worth going over. Anyways, guys, as always, God bless, and I'm out.